<sighs> Thanks for joining me today. I'll give a short introduction and then play a classic radio program for you. Today we have Columbia Presents Corwin from July 17th, 1945. There's uh, many things that could be highlighted in this recording. We have a story uh, written in verse by Norman Corwin, who was a prolific writer of note from his era. We have the incredible Groucho Marx in a vehicle well-suited to his wit and verbal talents. Uh, we keep going with the stellar cast, Vincent Price, Sylvia Sidney, Keenan Wynn, Elliot Lewis, and Robert Benchley. Uh, music is by Carmen Dragon conducted by Lud Gluskin. Uh, the performer I want to highlight in this show is Norman Lloyd. I remember him most from his performance as Dr. Auschlander from the television show St. Elsewhere. He's a prolific actor, producer, and director. Uh, as of my recording this audio today, Norman is alive and well uh, at over 100 years old. He's one of the last surviving performers from the golden age of radio. He's an extraordinary man. Uh, before we start, I want to recommend you check out uh, all the great uh, old-time radio programs that are currently available on archive.org. So here we go. Please enjoy this great old-time radio performance of a Norman Corwin story featuring Norman Lloyd in The Undecided Molecule. <laughs> Lucky you. You happen to dial this program in time to attend a trial stranger than any since we first learned the knack of breathing. And that was a long time back. The poor folks listening to other stations will lose all this. But congratulations to you for being no such fool as to miss the undecided molecule. Columbia presents Corwin. Tonight, in the third of a limited series of eight broadcasts for CBS, Norman Corwin brings you The Undecided Molecule, a rhymed fantasy concerning dangerous developments among the elements, as disclosed by Robert Benchley, Norman Lloyd, Groucho Marx, Vincent Price, Sylvia Sidney, Keenan Wynn, and the music of Carmen Dragon, conducted by Lud Gluskin, The Undecided Molecule. <laughs> Oh dear, the cosmic alarm, which means I fear some woeful harm is afoot or a wing in the universe. Some deplorable thing, some active curse, like a falling sky, or a new star cluster been banged up by a cluster buster. Sounds to me like a dried up sea, or another ice age for a spell. Or maybe it's only a freezing hell. On the other hand, it might possibly be that Hitler is alive and well. But after all, there's no point guessing. If it rings again in a manner of pressing, I'll answer the interstellar phone. I wish they'd leave a feller alone. Why only last eon? Hello, hello. Yes, this is he. What? Who? What's that? Say that again. But where? But how? But why? But when? Individually and solely? Now, wait a minute. Take it slowly. It did. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not that. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat. I'll call a session right away. You bet. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, grunt. Oh, moon. Oh, damn it. We are faced with a calamity. I must be cool as liquid air. Hold on. Who's that? Who's pulling my hair? Why, it is I. What am I scary at? Nonsense. I'll phone the secretary yet. Oh, dear, I am in such a tizzy. The obvious rhyme, the line is busy. I'll try again. There's no harm trying. Oh, I'm dying, Egypt. Dying. Hello. Say, this is the fifth VP in charge of physiochemistry. Now, listen here. 
An especially perky molecule has gone berserk. It has refused to be confined, incorporated, or assigned to anything. It simply sits with a calm expression, and it knits. Now, by all means, we must prevent such an utterly dangerous precedent. One holdout molecule, unpent, can cause the cosmos great ferment. We must arraign this beast and try it. The charge? Inciting particles to riot. Okay, arrange. I mean arraign. I mean all three. I mean the twain. No, never mind. Just get it booked. Or else the universe is cooked. Oh, me, oh, my. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Court of Arbitrations and Adjudications of Physiochemical Relations, Department of the Interior of the Atom, Criminal Sitting, Division of Investigation, Charge, Countercharge, Accusation and Confession, is now in session. The court will rise and face the justice who will adjust this case. See that your concentration centers on his honor, the justice, just as he enters. Which he is doing even now. Everybody bow, everybody bow. <coughs> to it. Contrary notwithstanding, uh, you may sit. Clank, read the charge. May it please the court, it all to wit. It pleases the court, get on with it. Whose voice is home? The cosmos and all the spheres, systems, clusters, galaxies, orbits, planets, satellites, mm. together with all species of animals, vegetables, and minerals appertaining thereto, mm. of all conditions of age, social standing, and sex, mm. versus the anonymous molecule hereinafter referred to as X. Mm. What's the charge against uh, said molecule? Unwilling to be named, rebelling when defined, declining to be blamed, objecting when assigned, protesting when selected, resisting an attack, refusing to be directed, and talking back. No serious, most dangerous, so strange, it's almost strangerous, insidious, precarious, a shade below nefarious. The possibilities in sight are frightful, meaningful of fright, and rueful, meaningful of rue, and gruesome, meaning... Uh, Rather gru. Providing, Your Honor, the charges are true. Oh, why, yes, they, they must be proven true. Which is something we have yet to do. Though. Quite right, but uh, who was asking you? Now, is the uh, prosecutor here? Present. Well, then, a pair, a pair. The trial's on. Try not to miss it. Step up and state your case and be explicit. May it please the court, this case involves a very small matter. By this, I don't mean mere trivia or idle chatter, but a particle of matter best described as little. Smaller than a jot? Even smaller than a tittle. Are you referring to molecule X? Yes. And why don't you say so? I will, if I may so. The point, Your Honor, is that should X be acquitted here, catastrophe will follow, since it must then be admitted here that all control of elements has given away to anarchy, and every substance will perforce be jittery and panicky. Thus, when we wish a molecule to join up with some other, to make a cup or a lemon drop for the Karamazov brothers, to be a fog or a catalogue, or a lawn to be idyllic on, a beagle or a bagel, or a mountain made of silicon. They may refrain, they may desist, and if enough of them should do so, there'll never be another tenor singer like Caruso. No dog to bark, no lark to hark, no grand old man like Talleyrand. No bee will be, you'll see no sea, no ostrich fan for Sally Rand. It's staggering. It's awesome. The damage X could wreak. By simply playing possum, it, it makes me rather weak. Clank, order me a pony uh, uh, of... Uh... Spirits of ammonia. Now, there you are. If X's rebellion is indulged, I think it only safe to say, and fair to be divulged, there'll never be another atom of the element ammonium. So take that home and play it on your honor's own euphonium. Young man, I blasted you a disapproving snort and warn you, one more phrase like that. <laughs> Contempt of court. Now, uh, who is here for the defense? I am, Your Honor. Well, commence. I will. I do so. Now you see, sir. I see nothing of the sort. Who's paying you your fee, sir? No one at all. The way it is with me, sir, 
I'm acting out of interest in civil liberty, sir. What's liberty to do with it, if you will be so kind? Just this. Where in the universal law books can you find it's criminal for anything to be of open mind? The precedent is ample. It is. Let's have a sample. Blackstone on the elements. Case of bismuth versus molybdenum. All drat the books. Our legal forebears doubtlessly all pipped in them. Hold on there, you, uh, you upstart. Is not the horse before the cart? Where would we be without tradition? In some advanced, improved position. What? What? Young man, are you a red? Have you been to the crimson bread? Neither to crimson nor to purple. Well, no whipper-snapping twiple. Challenge me. What do you take me for? A most distinguished expert on the law. Hmm. Very sensible thing you've said today. Uh, where were we in this trial, by the way? On the right of X to have an open mind. Now, surely justice is not yet so blind as to be unfavorably disposed... Towards openness of mind, my mind is closed. Your Honor, this is scandal. This... Now, now, see here, I can handle this. Let's not have no more of your bold to-do. A molecule must do what it is told to do. Now, that's decided. Suppose we break for lunch. I'm famished. It's been a tiring day. I sure would like to crunch. A nice, fresh salad bowl of crispy, tangy hashish. Your Honor, I cannot refrain from calling you... A fascist. Contempt of court. Flake, find the counsel for defendant, please. He has the brass to charge the bench with having fascist tendencies. Ridiculous and ludicrous. Make it a heavy fine. How could I be a fascist? Why, I am so benign, I hardly ever beat my wife. My children bow before me. I'm much admired by rattlesnakes and birds of prey adore me. I'm tender and I'm sensitive. An anti-insurrectionist. I wouldn't hurt a cobra. And I'm anti vivisectionist I'm sure that's absolutely true, and that you're not the sort who would deny a prisoner his right to speak in court. Your might is mixed with mercy, and wisdom's interfused. So how about a word or two from X, who is accused? Oh, very well. Since your appeal is to the better side of me, let no one say my conduct here is prejudiced or snide of me. We'll hear from X, but make it short. Where is the little dope? Right here beneath this new electronic super microscope. Swear him in. Put your right hand on the atomic table and say as loud as you are able, I do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and buzz was the muzzawala, buzzawala, hot set, fluga, buga, putt, putt, scuttle, button, nothing but the truth. So help me I. Now testify. What's that squeaking? My client, speaking. Well, how do you expect me to understand? There's an interpreter at hand. Where? I don't see any. Right at your elbow. Oh, yes. How do do? I'm very well, Bo. Bo, aren't you getting a bit familiar? I suppose I am, but please think nil of it. Can you understand what the molecule says? Yes. That's my business, isn't it? A fake character. <laughs> like a film by Disney. Disney's not involved in this. Why isn't he? I don't know. Where does all this lead? Nowhere. Then please proceed to interpret X for the court of Lex. Lex is Latin for law, I guess, which shows I, too, enjoy access to more than one tongue. I'm a giant intellect. Now, let's hear your client. Proceed, if you will, Mr. Molecule. Let your story fairly leap from you. Oh, come on. Come on, we're waiting now. The court wants to hear a peep from you. Uh, X says as follows. I cannot bring myself to be just anything that's asked of me. I cannot chide my inner soul. I must confide I've set a goal. I've thought it through and cannot bear to be shampoo for oily hair. My spirit sings, my fiber spiels of nobler things and high ideals. I'll fairly bust my heart within if I am just an onion skin. I worry some. What's drearier than to become bacteria? And when I've tried hard to obey, my conscience cried, but hold, but stay. A worm for bait? I have my pride. I vacillate. I can't decide. Though Hamlet had a hard time, why, he wasn't so sad as little I. You see my lot? Yes. It's not for me to be or not, but what to be. Mm -hmm. My plight inside is bona fide. I can't decide. I can't decide. I, I, I've never been so touched or moved. I, I sniffle and I blubber. I thought my heart was made of steel, but it is made of rubber. Poor little thing, tormented so by dreams of the eugenic. Oh, fiddlesticks, this molecule is but a schizophrenic. 
How is it that in all the time since matter first appeared, each separate iota has loyally adhered to universal law without a solitary beef? Beef? Until this pipsqueak came along. Now suddenly there's grief. The heavens shake and earthquakes quake and oceans heave and slither. And dogs and cats and acrobats are in a frightful dither. A timid snip has lost its grip and whines of its neurosis. If you condone this freak, you'll reek of moral halitosis. I strongly urge your honor, Perjex, to its smallest decimal, or else the infinite will bow before the infinitesimal. You're right. What was I thinking of to pity Jan Schlemiel? I thought my heart was fairly soft, but it is made of steel. I shall not spoil this molecule by sparing it the rod. And so I sentence it to die before a firing squad. Perhaps a little torture face, like singeing at the stake, and drops of water on the head. And for variety's sake... A little twist of the garrote, a slice of guillotine, and X shall mark the spot where X was boiled in Vaseline. <laughs> I ask this sentence be appealed. Impossible. Your client's fate is sealed. Ah, oh, no. The court's decision is far from ineluctable. I must remind you, my good sir, that matter is indestructible. Gadzooks, it is. I had forgot. We can't destroy a particle. It seems we're in the power. Of this clever young upstartical. The case is lost. I must withdraw. If punishment's not capital and X cannot be executed, I don't give a rap at all. We can't imprison it, and we'd be in a most infernal stew with cosmic checks and balances eternally askew. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Vesmir, Vesmir. What will become of all of us? This little Jake and his strange quake will surely be the fall of us. Your Honor. You, you mean me? May I have a conference with you at the bench? Why, of course. May I suggest a means by which disaster be evaded? My client is no pig head and may likely be persuaded to join some element or other. Mm. X is not a softy. No. It merely wishes to belong to something fairly lofty. Its point of view is forward. Its attitude is global. Its heart is set on being part of something good and noble. How righteous. So I suggest you demonstrate, and this will never hurt you, that being this or that or t'other has a point of virtue. Well, uh, how do you propose we do it? I have a plan. I was coming to it. Invite a representative of each important kingdom. Uh, you mean like, uh, like Dempsey for the ring or Artie Shaw for Swingdom? No, but you're warm. A lion for the jungle or an eagle for all wingdom? Keep on. Remember, three of them and one for every kingdom. Oh, I know. Animal and mineral and, uh, I forget the third. The Vegetable Kingdom. Why, yes, of course. Absurd. That's splendid. We could get them here and each could make a pitch. And X could then make up its mind to which it wished to hitch. I'll call a recess in this trial while we round up a trio. Meanwhile, some music. Plank? Yes, sir. Uh, can you sing solo, Mio? No, but the court musicians would be very glad to play for you. Where's the conductor? I'm right here. Is everything okay for you? You bet. Shall I begin, Your Honor, with a prelude by Stravinsky or a toccata for the G-string by the famous brothers Minsky? Have you anything around that Dmitri Shostakovich wrote? Oh, yes. A Pasakalia, and I'm sure that you will love it, Schnott. I've changed my mind. I'll have a slug of music by Lynn Murray. The one he calls Wer der Nacht von Chicken mitten Curry. Is that title correct? Yeah, I fear it is. Okay, then. Play it. Here it is. One, two... vegetable kingdom will rise and address the court concerning the advantages to molecule X of joining this classification. With handy allusions to paleontology, plant psychology, stems and flowers, roots and fruits, and outstanding examples of horticulture and botany, if he's got me. I doubt that X shall ever see an atom lovely as a tree. Why, nothing has got quite the charm of the most ordinary palm, with coffee beans and turpentine and grapes which make imported wine. And as for molds and types of fungus, <laughs> we have some noted ones among us. Penicillin is a spore, noble beyond metaphor. Life is earnest, life is sweet, 
for the common sugar beet. Cotton, spinach, hemp and hop. <laughs> One could really never stop singing vegetary praise for years and months and weeks and days. Well, uh, X says that trees are chopped for wood and that he sees no special good in being a beet which people eat. X says a palm, though fine in Maine, can come to harm in a hurricane. The grapes a curse, since drink is evil, and cotton is worse for the ball weevil. X does not wish to look for trouble. It's not his dish, the vegetable. For a molecule that's supposed to be meek, the choosy Mr. X has a lot of cheek. Step down, vegetable. Let minerals speak. The spokesman for the mineral kingdom will address the court concerning the advantages to Molecule X of joining this classification, with allusions to metallurgy, gypsum, filiform silver, motor cars, nickel bars, pickle jars, and manganese. Please. Now, the way that X can best ensure his choice of substance will endure is to stop his flopping about and settle down to being a respectable metal. Oh, fiddly-dee, fiddly-dum, yum-yum, oh boy, aluminum. If he likes the work of Byron, he can be the iron in irony. That sounds to me like pure, unalloyed non sequitur. If he wishes to be a worker, he can serve in a column of mercury. And if he'd rather be gay and giddy some, there's radium, iranium, iridium. Oh, tantalum, tungsten, talcum, tin, ipsy, pipsy, bitters, and gin, alto, sex, and copper tax, racks, and racks, barax, barax, merrily, barely, chilly by gin, triple by zinc, and kale. And team, team, team. Uh, oh, I, I beg. Uh... Are these football yells necessary? Yes, sir. Very. Well, what do they mean? Well, amphibolsphene and pyroxene, being amygdaloidally idiochromatic, may create a stalactitic static, affecting the scalahedral speed. Mm -hmm. On this, the experts are fully agreed. Mm. Well, uh, that clears it up very well indeed. Uh, proceed. If X wants glamour, need he be told of silver, platinum, and gold? And the safest job on any planet is to be a nice, strong rock of granite. If he likes good cooking, a dinner will boil very nicely over mineral oil. Does he try to be a wagon hitched to a star, then apply to be a Hollywood motor car? Oh, I could pour mineral law before you forever and a day, if it wouldn't bore you. Well, uh, X says, says he, that any jury will find mercury somewhat mercurial. Iron gets rusty, bare rocks too nude, talc is too dusty, oil is crude. The automobile is not his bent. One elliptical wheel means an accident. Gold you can keep. He simply box at lying deep beneath Fort Knox. I've never heard such utterly rash, hypercritical balderdash. If I weren't so stately and dignified, I'd take that molecule outside and bop him right in his little beezer. Who does he think he is, little Caesar? Ah. Let the animal kingdom present its spokesman. Come on, where is the gent? Right here, but your honor. All right, begin. It's a her. Never mind, swear him in, swear him in. Very well. The spokesman for the animal kingdom, etc. Species of bird, bee, dog, flea, hen, men. Does solemnly swear, etc. In the name of the Lama, New, Orp, Yacht, Kangaroo, Slippery Dan, Charlie Chan, the Common Man, and so forth, that he or she will please go forth and testify to the legal cause. Thank you. I gladly take the floor. Mm, rather pretty, eh bien? Hello? I could fascinate X with the mystery of our considerable natural history. I could tell him the fame of each colorful name. Go on, I'm goose pimply and blistery. I could tell of a bird named the Smew and another eclect. Urubu, of Tsikitai, Do, and of Tsingle Row. And a fish that is called in canoe? Quite true. And a monkey that's called Wanderoo? Quite true. Oh, I just love to listen to you. I could tell of the vinegaroon, the squacko, the guiduck, baboon. The antelope bongo, the crow known as drongo. Will you join me for lunch one day soon? For the record, may I ask whether these names are real or fictionary? Don't interrupt. They're all in your dictionary. Now, the kapakai has a whistle. Of course. Distinct from the ling and dixissel. The Zebu and Zivet, and Terek of Tibet. I cling to your words like a thistle. I urge X to join the Toucan or some other nice animal clan, like the beautiful Kuti or charming Aguti. But what of the species of man? Oh, that's another subject entirely. I do not recommend that X get involved in the affairs of mankind. Mm. Is that because you believe in the principle of matter over man's mind? No, but being human would surely hex a sensitive molecule like X. Just how do you mean, Queen? Well, 
It's not so easy to be a common man. No matter how much you work and plan, it's still a neat trick to live the span commonly allotted to the common man. A wandering breeze will affect your pump. If not a measle, then a mump. You can pull a tendon, get roundly hissed, or have to depend on an analyst. How true. You can get tomane or be undersold. Then there's Franco Spain. Free. And the common cold. A review can stink, you can miss a guess, or be told how to think by the yellow press. Did I tell you I, I greatly admire your dress? No. There's water on the knee and athlete's toes, the doctor's fee and the running nose, aching bursitis, rashes and rickets, colitis and worsitis, and parking tickets. Not in this court. You can get diabetes or caught in the rain. Not in this court. You can run out of Wheaties or into a train. You can get neurasthenia, a blizzard can chill you. Your wife can be menia, a dentist drill you. A plaintiff can sue you, a bite give malaria. If no lover woo you, alas, miseraria. Mm. Very legal embroilments, just let me take care of you. Thank you. A fascist will fight you, and then there is asthma. Vampires can bite you and whine on your plasma. You can be badly reared and flunk out in Latin, or tangle your beard in spaghetti o' gratin. It's fattening. You can get a flat tire, drop teeth in the drain, or suffer a dire escutcheon stain. You can drown in the Dnieper or suffer the bend. You can wind up a leper and lose all your friends. Hard to wind up a leper. You can settle in Philly or step in a pail or feel willy-nilly and cease to inhale. How morbid, depressing, in fact, suicidal. By the way, have you ever an hour that's idle? Your Honor, my client has something to say. I could meet you, uh... What's that about X again, eh? He's ready, I said. Well, let him go ahead. Uh, X says as follows. I'm glad to know the awful truth. Man has such woe, forsooth, forsooth. What philosophy. Yet what he's done, proud hands can clap. He's beaten the Hun and will the Jap. He flies the air just like a smew and swims for fair like the in canoe. Yes, like the in canoe. He has a soul. He reads Descartes. Like me, his goal is a thing apart. He's learned to kill the harmful bug by serum pill and sulfur drug. He beats the band and goes to school to understand the molecule. You're the rascal. In face of odds, he makes his way. Gives birth to quads, builds TVA. Displays his charms, plays blindfold chess, listens to Brahms and CBS. Mm, CBS, of course. The common guy both thinks and feels. Nothing's too high for his ideals. Though it cost him sadly to put down jerks. Please. He's not done badly. Look at his works. For all his pains, we owe him thanks. And I do gladly join his ranks. The human flock has golden fleece. Grace to its stock and lasting peace. Oh, splendid. What a moving speech. I had thought X a worm, a leech. But now I see he's a regular fellow. He's twanged me so I quiver like jello. Oh, joy, oh, rapture. Fields of clover. Looks to me like trial's over. Quite so. My dear X, forgive the digression, but I'm sure you'll be happy in your chosen profession. As for you, Miss Hanama, you are great. It's slightly extra legal, but... Uh, have you a date for later in the evening? Do you like to dance? Have you any marked tendency toward romance? I have. But what about the wife you seldom beat? And the children you have mentioned who grovel at your feet? Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! Mere rhetoric and figmentary frippery. The legal mind behaves this way. It's, it's very smooth and slippery when arguing. I have no wife or any such a fixture. In that case, I will marry you, as in a Class B picture. We'll create a happy ending, plus two children of each sex. To be a part of one of them, uh, shall we invite friend X? Magnificent idea, that. Is our future child agreed? X says, indeed. And ask you speed your visit to the Reverend so we can have a life to lead and bring this to a clever end. Oh, Ray, I thought you'd never end. Will the court musicians kindly advance to the mic and play a wedding dance? And then after that, please segue and sally into a sort of a kind of finale. One, two, three. <laughs> You have been listening to The Undecided Molecule, a rhymed fantasy written and directed and produced by Norman Corwin for CBS as the third of eight programs in the series Columbia Presents Corwin. Carmen Dragon composed the music, Lud Gluskin conducted.
That gifted man, Robert Benchley, appeared as the interpreter for the molecule. And you can see me soon in the Paramount picture, Duffy's Tavern. It was Norman Lloyd who did that wonderful work as the highly competent official clerk. Quiet. Oliver Wendell Groucho Marx appeared as the judge. And I'm going to be together with my brothers on the stage and screen again in a night in Casablanca. Some one of these nights. Good night. Vincent Price as the prosecutor was convincing and smooth and even slick. And you can catch me soon in 20th Fox's Dragon Wick. It was Sylvia Sidney who convinced the molecule that being a human being can be fun. And if you'd like to see more of me, I'm appearing in a new film entitled Blood on the Sun. I, Keenan Wynn, in sound mind and body, I object, performed as the counsel for the defense of the molecule. And to give you an idea how versatile I am, I was also the spokesman for the vegetable mineral. <laughs> Next week at this time, Columbia presents one of the most popular and often requested programs from last year's series, New York, a tapestry for radio, starring Orson Welles in the role of the narrator. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.